Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with ShopSaber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. It's time for another Router Bob out and about trip, and today we're going to San Francisco, California to design Trifecta. Sarah and Henry are going to share their really neat ShopSaber story with us. Let's get started. Yeah. But I love it. What did you put in my coffee? Whiskey. Well, why don't you just go? Yeah. Editing. So it, I guess it all started with Henry um, because he was the woodworker. I had a, a background in business. But Henry's been doing woodworking for a little while now. When did you start? Since I was at school, I had a, I enjoyed doing woodwork at school. I used to call it design, um, design craft technology. And uh, that's what I always thought I was going to do. Um, but after I finished school, I ended up going to university for uh, um, IT, computers. And I went, went traveling off to Bournemouth, and I got into university, and I stuck at it for about a year until I realized I actually wasn't very good at it and I didn't really enjoy it. So after that, I went and found a job. Funny enough, it was in IT and computers. Um, but I just saved up and I went traveling for six months just to clear my mind and decide what I wanted to do. And then when I came back, um, I decided I wanted to do, uh, go to London and do furniture design. And that's where it all started. I, uh, it was a um, prototyping course and design course. Uh, we had really good lecturers and I spent four years in London studying and building prototypes, um, doing furniture and woodwork. And I also got a job um, working near King's Cross for a custom cabinet company. Mm -hmm. um, funny thing is my friend got me the job because he injured his hand climbing over a fence. Uh, he was a drunken student like me. And uh, <laughs> we, um, he got me the job and that's where I started doing cabinetry. And I stayed with that company pretty much until, uh, again, I went traveling and, and I, I met Sarah. Yeah. yeah. He was working in London and I was teaching English in Japan. And Henry came to visit a friend, and uh, I thought he was pretty great. And then after I came back from Japan, um, I went to visit him in England, and, bit. and then we kind of kept in touch. Yep. And then he invited me to New York for Valentine's Day, and that was our first date. And about three months later, he proposed. And then, uh, then we started the immigration process. We did fiance visa, and Henry immigrated. One thing that was really cool is he actually came to the US on his fiance visa and couldn't work yet. But he got a job with Berkeley Mills, which is one of the biggest, uh, with, he got a job with a big cabinet maker in the area. And uh, they waited for him, which was nice. Yeah. And he worked there from pretty much as soon as he was able to work until you went out on your own. Yeah, it was a, it was a great company to work for. They had uh, tr a very traditional company and that they did arts and crafts furniture and they did tonsu. And they also had a kitchen department, which is where I went and worked. Uh, the, the thing that I found fascinating was how they project managed their projects and how they incorporated CNC technology um, and CNC programs into their manufacturing and how they laid it out. Um, and we could build, I could see the potential and how quickly you can build a quality product assisted by CNC. Um, this company did a lot of hand work, a lot of hand quality, uh, but the, a lot of it big part of their machine was, was having the technology incorporated. So I worked there for three years. Um, after that, I, I left and started up business with another uh, colleague of mine, and we did that for two years. Um, unfortunately, the recession came along, and it was uh, extremely difficult to, to make any money, but it was, it was a good experience. I made all my mistakes, cut my teeth, having my own business. It's always, each step is always kind of terrifying. Uh, no matter how small or how big it is, it's, it's whatever you're used to. Um, so we... Well, one of the interesting things about that is that they were both woodworkers. So when they went into business together, they both brought the same skill set to the business. And that was something that, you know, Henry goes, okay, if I did this again, I'm not going to partner with somebody with the same set. We need to have every person you bring the business needs to bring something and My different. partner would, would, would agree too. The, the guy that I started up, I think he would agree. Yeah. Um, at the time though, I was always interested in technology. I, uh, I studied um, AutoCAD programs, so I learned how to do all my drawings. Um, again, I, mean, I studied at university, but I already used it. 
and so I refreshed and I did all my drawings on CAD mm -hmm. um, and we were doing, you know, we bought a panel saw and we cut everything out in the panel saw. So even then I was progressing towards a more high-tech system. Um, yeah. And then for two years, I, after that business shut down for two years, I, I was um, quite exhausted from the, the initial experience of having a small business and I thought I'd get into project management or sales or something where I got to you know, wear clean clothes every day and um, shower at the, at the beginning of the day instead of the end of the day, as, <laughs> as I like to say. Um, and we... Um, and I worked. Yeah. I, had a, I had a normal paying job. Um, we live here in San Francisco. So I uh, think like a lot of woodworkers, a very supportive spouse, uh, yeah. helped him keep going for a few years until I think it was just one day you go, this is what I've always been good at. Yeah. It's the only thing I'm good at. Well, I had a job, I had a job, a really great job. But unfortunately, again, I, I um, we both have dyslexia and so I didn't really fit into the, the office environment. <clears throat> so at which point I decided that's it, I'm, I'm gonna go back into cabinetry and furniture design um, I'm going to stick at it. This is going to be, it, you know, sink or swim, and this is what I'm good at. So I'm going to do that. So I found a, a space in a co-op, and they had table saws and nice time savers, and you know, a lot of nice equipment. Um, started with a very small budget, a few hand tools, um, and just went for it. Just, just decided it, yeah. I got to get up every day and go somewhere and do it. And that was the founding of Design Trifecta. That's where we kept the name, and that's where we started. And that was five years ago. Five now. years that's ago. That's how we started. So uh, Henry's working in his co-op, trying to find things to keep him busy every day, um, building anything he could build for anyone who would pay him. And he came up with an idea one day for a knife block, because we hated our knife block. Every time you grabbed a knife, it hit the upper cabinets, it was ugly. It was only like two years old and already looked beat up. But we loved to cook and we loved our knives. And so he came up with an idea and he just kept looking. He goes, I cannot believe this doesn't exist. I just want like a magnetic, freestanding, rotating knife block. So, um, so he prototyped it, because he's in his shop. He was working on stuff. And he made it out of solid walnut. and. Uh, I love that knife block. I used that prototype for two years. And um, he was getting, you were doing well at work. I was fed up with my job yep. and I decided to get an MBA. So I went, I went to grad school and was getting an uh, international business degree from Thunderbird School of Global Management. And a lot of times in grad school, they ask you to imagine you have a product. Imagine you have a product, what's the target market? Who are you gonna sell it to? How are you gonna make it? So for two years, that was my, my imaginary product, was this knife block I'd been using um, that Henry designed. So uh, he's still chugging away, building cabinetry, any, anything to pay the bills. Yeah. And in between, Sarah's like, where's that next prototype? Where's that next prototype? Yeah, I'm keep like, working on I've got jobs to do. Where's my photos? I need photos of this thing. I need videos of this thing. Come on, help me out here. And we just kind of pushed each other. So um, I was about to graduate and in one of my classes we talked about crowdfunding and it's a great opportunity to kind of test the product to get pre-sales and just see if someone's interested and one of my professors brought home a really good point that stuck with me that said if you want to put something into the world you don't need a business plan you don't need a lot of writing you just need a prototype and you need to ask people if they want it so i was like wait a minute i got a prototype I can do this, there's no holding me back. So in August of 2015, I ran a Kickstarter campaign for the 360 knife block. And um, I thought, you know, if I graduate and it's not funded and nobody wants to buy this thing, then I'll just get a job. I just got a master's in business, everything's gonna be fine. If it gets funded, then maybe this can be my job. And then I don't have to polish my resume and go out into the world again. Um, and so we were funded in four days. And it was pretty exciting, so we went about immediately starting in September trying to figure out how to actually produce and build the knife block. Yeah, we had to produce, our first batch was 100. Yeah. We had to, our goal was to, to, to produce 100 um, knife blocks. And there's a lot of components in the 360 knife block. And so I created jigs that went on the table saw. I created about four $100 routers, or I had four $100 routers <laughs> that I laid up with different angles and set them up. And then I went, went to town <laughs> um, milling solid wood and then cutting them on the panel saw and then shaping them on the, the table saw um, with these jigs on my fingers, like literally. Well, I mean, each just, little piece is like a two inch yeah. by three inch piece. So yeah. he's got his little hands, he's around. Cutting each angle, you know, like, <laughs> you know, 
and almost like thousands of, of parts on this table saw that had to be completely precise to make all the angles work out. So I'm cutting all these parts and... Uh, oh man, yeah. And then we hand, hand assemble them, which is still no other way to assemble it. You gotta tape it, glue it, hand put in the magnets. But just the act of cutting them, and, and because each piece has to fit together perfectly from the top to the bottom and all the sides, it, it was something that it was a challenge. In, instantly, I mean, we kickstarted it and by October, Henry's like, we're gonna need a CNC. So yeah, we decided we needed a CNC machine uh, so we can produce the, the knife lock. Um, first place I looked, like everybody else, I went online and started searching CNC machines. Uh, initially, we thought we would have something quite small, like a, you know, maybe a, a four by two CNC machine. Um, and the more we looked, you know, I looked at, you know, I got approached by lots of CNC companies, uh, one of which, of course, was ShopSaber. Uh, Brandon called me personally, and um, he impressed me. He was very personable. Uh, he started, um, you know, I started asking about the different machines, and he sent us, you know, sending us quotes. And one of the things that impressed me was he um, assured us of the quality of the build. I was looking for a reliable machine um, and a company that would give me the tech support that I needed and he, uh, he assured me that they would be able to do that. Um, he was very confident about his product. And so he started sending us um, quotes for different, for the smaller CNC machines. And as we're looking at it, we're thinking, well, you know, I'm a cabinet builder. Uh, it was my, my original business and my original trade. We're like, well, we should, we should get a bigger machine because we're realizing we can actually afford a lot more than what we realized when we were working with ShopSaber. Well, I think with Henry did a good a good thing for me anyway. He got me started saying, okay, we're, we need to buy a CNC. And I go, okay, well, how much is a CNC? He goes, oh, they're gonna be $200,000. And I went, well, I don't know if we can do a CNC. That's, that's insane. Um, but we knew we needed something for the knife block parts. So now I'm in this position going, I don't wanna pay somebody to outsource a CNC. How much can we get one for? And, you know, we buy a lot of used equipment. Um, good equipment should last a long time. But with the robot, we wanted something with good tech support. Uh, we really wanted someone. Um, I had I had no experience actually personally running a CNC. I had zero hours running a CNC machine. Um, so so that, was, that was the main thing. New was a good way to go. Also, um, you know, ShopSaber hooked us up with direct capital for financing, and that was something we couldn't have done on a used machine. So that was pretty or. It was, it was the right fit for us, yeah. and it's proven to be the right fit for the last three years, three years we've had it, because it was paid off in two years. And um, you know, it seems like a big investment when you first look at it. Thankfully, I was fresh out of grad school. I had an Excel sheet. I put the numbers in. What's my uh, return on the investment and net present value of said investment? And numbers that probably a lot of people wouldn't care to look at, but it really did make financial sense for us. And by the time it was paid off, it has more than paid for itself. Yeah. I mean, Henry was a, a one-man shop in a co-op space, and rather than getting an employee or an assistant, yeah. he said, I think I'm, I'm gonna go technology. And yeah, and I've always been technology driven, you know, trying to get use uh, software where I can. Even when I was using a panel saw or a table saw, I was always doing my cut my cut sheets on a, on a piece of software and then cutting it by hand. Um, and I wanted to increase my productivity and the work, the quality of work that I could do. And so apart from the machine being able to cut many, many knife block parts um, perfectly, I also knew that we would be able to use it for, for the cabinetry. Um, we upgraded to the tool changer. Yeah. Cause I mean, when we first started thinking cheap tabletop CNC because hey, the knife block's small, the parts are small, we can do something small. Um, but that quickly became unrealistic and just not, not the wisest use of our money because if you're going to need to invest again in the future, we wanted to get something that would grow with us. I can tell you we have no plans of getting rid of this. Even if we bought another CNC, this one's staying around because it's just that great of a machine for us. Um, you know, the tool changer was one. At first we go, oh, we're going to pop for the tool changer. And the knife block had six custom bits, right? Yeah, well I decided, I knew from my experience with working in another cabinet shop, the features that I needed, I needed a uh, vacuum hold down. And they, they had that, that I needed, uh, because the knife block has about six to seven, like seven, um, seven bits. Uh, tool changes. Because to it was between the down. six tool changer and the ten. And I was like, okay, we gotta yeah. go for the big one. Let's just go for the, the best that we can get. Yeah. So you got your bits custom though. 
Yeah, so we had a we we managed to upgrade. The, everything came within within budget. Everything was a lot more affordable than we imagined it would be. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time, I'm like, as long as the quality is there, and it was. Um, and we were um, developing the knife block, and we had uh, Vortex helped us build the custom router bits that that we run on the machine. Um, the CNC words can cut, you know, thousands of components perfectly every time. Whereas before, I was cutting every little. Uh, component with, with my fingers, um, which was not feasible in the long run because eventually I'd, I was gonna, somebody was going to have an accident and it was going to be me. <laughs> yeah, he uh, really sold me on the safety because I watched him cut these little knife block pieces on the table saw and then he set up four routers and he's running each of the pieces through that and it, it didn't take long for me as somebody who's not a woodworker to appreciate the value of having a robot do the cutting and then the consistency. Um, yeah, and that was the thing. We we ordered a custom plywood and had all our different variations of veneer on there. And now what I can do is we we spent a lot of time developing the the program to run it. Again, the router bits. Um, and now I can throw a sheet down once I've I've set up the the CNC machine, and I can put sheet down after sheet after sheet and cut out perfect components that will fit with parts that were cut out six months ago, perfectly interchangeable every time. So how we use the CNC now is for anything we could possibly use the CNC for. Obviously the knife block was the first part of it and that's been a big part of why we bought it and why we have it. But we even make our custom foam caps out of, um, with the CNC. So that's been kind of an added bonus. Um, in addition, Henry's been working on furniture and cabinetry on the CNC. Yeah, we have, um, like our name suggests, design trifecta. We do several different things. We have the knife block, um, we have the, the, the traditional cabinetry, and also having studied design in London, um, I continue to try and develop another product line. And this is done a, one of the strengths of the CNC machine. Um, we have developed uh, various pieces of furniture, credenza, side table, wine rack, um, and everything with a certain design tweak to it that makes it unique to, to us. Um, one of the beauties of that and utilize the strength of CNC and the shop saber is that I can design it once. Unlike custom cabinetry, I spend many, many hours going to job sites, measuring, pricing, um, engineering, um, programming. But the other side of what I want to do is, is the furniture. What I can do is I can design it, develop it, and then code it, program it, get the maximum efficiencies out of the material. Um, and then after that, we can, we can repeat and repeat. So even if we don't have an order for six months, a year, it doesn't matter. We get an order through, um, we can bring up the program, we can throw down the sheet on the material, and we can reproduce those components um, to uh, perfectly every time. Um, the other side of it, the cabinetry, um, where I originally started, uh, we looked into, you know, how do you, how do you expand your production? How do you make more with your time? Um, our first idea was not to get more employees. We were like, well, with the, with the shop saber, with the CNC, we can actually um, increase our production twice, thrice, you know, quadruple. And now uh, I'm doing a job right now. Um, it's in San Francisco. And I spent, you know, several hours uh, programming it, engineering it, designing it. Several days. Always, several days, but I'm <laughs> always learning new software. Uh, yeah. Always looking for, we, we upgrade our software, we, we use quality software to aid us in our design and in our programming. Um, but for example, I, you know, I put the front, front end of the work in, and then on Monday I came in and I cut up, you know, 17, 16, 17 sheets of material in one day. Um, it's expensive material. We're looking at, you know, I'm paying $120 a sheet for a quality, um, you know, walnut plywood. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want the program to mess up. I don't want the bits to break down. I don't want the machine to break down midway through a cut. Um, I got through all 16 sheets um, in a day or less. I wasn't rushing. I wasn't pushing myself or the machine. Everything, you know, having done the the programming and spent the time in the front end, the the shop saber took care of me at the back end. Um, and already midway through the week, we're, we're building the cabinets or I'm building them myself and they're coming together just great. If there was any advice to someone on the fence about getting a Shop Saber CNC, I would say absolutely go for it. Uh, I think we're at a stage in woodworking and in business where you have to embrace technology if you really want to compete. Yeah, I think uh, if I had a piece of advice, 
um, business is all about jumping off at the deep end. It doesn't matter if it's a big jump or a small jump, it's always a little bit frightening. Um, and every step I've taken, every jump I've made, you know, don't be afraid of the technology, don't be made afraid of the machinery. If you persevere um, with Shop Sabre, they'll be, be there, they'll support you mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can get them and they'll continue to grow uh, with our machine. Yep. I wanna thank Sarah and Henry for opening up Design Trifecta for us and sharing their incredible story. It's great to see someone come up with an idea and create a successful company based on the idea. And I'm really excited that Shop Saber CNC was part of that success. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.